everyone, I'm Alex and I'll be your speaker today for Docs Are Everyone's Business. I'm really excited to be here with you at Codeland and I hope you'll find my talk useful. Before we start, I want to mention that my views expressed in this talk are my own and do not represent the views of my employer. You can find me on Code Newbie, Twitter, and Polywork at Alexandra MMR. Before we get started, I wanted to mention that the um, documentation or documents words will also be referred to as docs, so the abbreviated version for them. So what we'll cover today, um, well, in 2020, we began showing our product docs the care that they needed and made them inner source because docs are everyone's business in our opinion. Our goal is to make it easy for our teams and customers to use and love our cloud product internally with the help of documentation. So what did we learn? How did we do it? In this talk, we'll go through the then and now journey of how internal product documentation evolved and how the community and customers contribute to our changes and how you can do it for your product too. So how it started is gonna be our first topic, how it's going, second topic, open source docs, a little bit about why and how um, and how you can do it, and then what helps, so what helped us and what we think is gonna help you. A little bit about me. As I said, um, I go by Alex. My full name is Mary Alexandra, and I am a tech lover from 1994, as you can see in the slides. So a little bit about myself in terms of what I do. I'm currently a public cloud product adoption lead. My current role combines a lot of my previous experience as a software engineer, a content strategist, a designer, developer advocate, um, and it kind of brings them all together into one role that I love very, very much. So I'm also a huge unicorn lover. And for that, last year I moved to Scotland and their national animal is a unicorn. So I was super excited that I made the move here. How did we start in 2020? Well, when I first came into my current role and product team, we had a lot of things that were really not working for us in terms of documentation. So for example, there were quite a few outdated pages of product documentation. It wasn't really owned by anyone um, and they weren't kept up to date or maintained. We did have a bit of a cumbersome contribution process. So not everyone found it really easy to change their product documentation or where to go to get started or how they would even go around it. Also, some of the um, technologists that are contributing to our documentation are not necessarily engineers and we had a pull request based process for updating them. So we had to look at some ways to make it a bit easier for them to contribute as well. We also didn't have any team or points of contact for what documentation is actually approved and what needs more work. Um, we also had a bit of an outdated front end framework for our platform and our customers are quite frustrated with uh, not finding up-to-date documentation, the right documentation, or not being able to navigate our docs. We also didn't include any of our documentation updates or changes into any of our marketing or communication releases. And that all changed because our adoption team was formed and we started tending to our docs and magic happened. However, we do wish that it was going all unicorns and rainbows and it was all smooth and we didn't have anything else to improve. But as any process, documentation is a continuous improvement journey. And as much as we would want it to be all done and dusted, it's not really um, going to be that way. So instead, how it's actually going in 2021, uh, we are actually in a way better position regarding our documentation. Um, and we have done a lot of progress. We have really, really worked on a lot of different things that have made uh, life easier for our teams and for our customers. We still have a lot of areas to improve, but overall we think we're going in the right direction. So we started with a content audit for all of our docs. We went through all of our product pages, a lot of them. Um, we identified missing pages. We archived um, 
outdated content. We reach out to teams to ask them to get involved and update their product docs and maintain them going forward. We introduced feedback loops so customers can feedback and let us know if there are any issues or um, changes needed for pages. We also added the ability um, for them to raise pull requests to fix them. So allow them to be part of the contribution process. It would still need to be approved by our content team, but it makes our life so much easier because you don't have to go looking for what needs changing and updating. Customers come and tell you or customers raise a PR and they can actually change it. We also, as I mentioned a little bit before, added an open contribution model. Um, and anyone can contribute, but the product team still needs to approve it to make sure that we have consistent and accurate content. We've started um, focusing on technical writing and upskilling our teams. Uh, we, as I said, didn't have the best uh, front end framework that we were using, so we have switched from Angular to React. We have upgrade, upgraded our Node and Hugo versions as well. And we started doing a lot of customer research and testing in all stages of documentation design. Uh, we started running customer research for our big changes like onboarding documentation. We also ran testing sessions for layout changes, uh, kind of like A-B testing, if you're familiar with that. And we also looked at um, testing for creating interactive elements like forms and decision trees to make sure that we aren't making it harder for our customers to get to that information. We also made a big change in terms of how we were uh, marketing and promoting our documentation and how we looked at them as part of the engineering process. So they are now part of the definition of done of our engineering teams. So when you're creating a feature, you need to make sure that the appropriate documentation is also provided before that feature can be released. We also add documentation updates in our communications for release notes every week. They are part of our objectives and key results, so OKRs, and also our reporting for end of quarter. We also include them in roadmap items, in planning changes, in feature releases, press releases. They are part of our journey end to end for our product. Because uh, docs are everyone's business, and we want all of our teams and partners to be as invested in good documentation as we are. So in terms of how did that translate into our usage? Um, of course, we all want our documentation efforts to translate into increased usage and in return, increased adoption of our product. In our case, it was a happy case, and it actually did increase it a lot. Uh, we started this experiment in 2020 and we made a decision to dedicate resources, time and care to our, doc, to our docs because we truly believe that they are at the core of great products and we wanted our customers to have the best experience. And for us, it paid out because a year later, we have gone from, from 76,000 sessions in a year to 137,000. And that is actual sessions where someone navigates to our Docs website and uses it. Um, we've also grown uh, with about 10,000 unique users year on year, considering that our entire technology workforce is about 50,000. <laughs> that is a lot. Um, it's more than half now of um, our total engineering workforce. Uh, we now have about four and a half sessions per user, up from 3.3. And our page views have increased by 65%. So people are spending more time. Also, they're coming back more and they're visiting more pages than before um, when they're reading our documentation. So in terms of why would you open source your documentation? Well, we thought of about three main reasons that were kind of our, our goals. Uh, we wanted to increase transparency and centralized knowledge. So we wanted to make sure that Everyone has access to the information regarding our product without having to rely on asking people, raising a ticket, um, maybe getting a bit confused by word of mouth from other, other engineers or users. Um, we also wanted to centralize our knowledge and have one place for all of our customers to come for anything related to public cloud, um, from things like Terraform to, um, you know, any infrastructure as code, logging and monitoring, onboarding, everything like that. Um, we then wanted to 
drive products adoption and ownership. So we wanted our teams to be accountable for the documentation they produce, but also to show them that by making sure that you have the appropriate and full documentation that your customers need, your product will be used more. Also, obviously, we wanted to improve our customer experience and also amplify their voice. The feedback loops and the feedback mechanisms we've introduced are priceless in terms of understanding what our customers need and where they need it, and also prioritizing and um, introducing new features on our backlog and roadmap. So in terms of how uh, you how we did it and how you could do it too, um, you need to find a place to store your documentation. This can be a content management system, a bespoke web platform. Uh, we have a web platform, um, but they all have pros and cons. So it will depend on what you want to do and your teams to make a decision. We won't go into the details on this right now, but you can reach out to me afterwards if you want to chat about it. So how did we open source our docs? Well, we started by having a comprehensive and clear start um, to end contribution guide, including how do you set up locally? How do you make changes in the web version? Because I mentioned before, we had some non-engineering contributors as well. So we um, allowed them to use the web version of the code management solution to lower the barrier to entry for changing the documentation. Secondly, uh, when I say advertise, I don't mean selling. <laughs> I mean letting your teams and customers know uh, that they can and are encouraged to contribute, who they can ask questions from, uh, how they can do it, where they can provide feedback, um, have it in the footer of your web platform, have it in the release notes, have it in the support page, um, and also make sure that you advertise your changes in your documentation. And then thirdly, have dedicated approvers and reviewers. Don't let everyone add everything in there without having a control mechanism and ensure um, they are adding accurate and clear content. You should have experts in the product review um, of the content, as well as your technical writers looking for consistency in form of writing, because we don't want any spelling mistakes in your beautiful documentation. So what helped us? Um, understanding where we are and where we want to go. So auditing our current state and also setting clear objectives. We also wanted to have a dedicated team to work on our documentation strategy and process and help with it. We also wanted to upskill everyone in tech writing across our different teams from engineering to product to design to communications. And we wanted to make docs an equal concern for all of them. So what could help you? Well, you can start by uh, looking at things at, like an audit and goal planning uh, using Markdown because it has a lower barrier to entry. Um, you can start looking at creating templates for your product pages, usage docs, onboarding, uh, deployment learning, things like that. Also partials, which are um, blocks of code that can be maintained in one file. And when that file changes, all of the other uses of that partial in other pages change as well. Automation, so pulling product information in matrix pages or using it for filtering. Uh, obviously, open source or inner source where anyone can contribute. Make sure you have um, a contribution guide and also content approvers to ensure the quality of content. Invest in tech and UX writing. Uh, Google has some really excellent free resources if you're looking for something um, and at least try to do training, if not hire specialists. And again, feedback loops and customer input are priceless. Uh, implement web analytics on your docs platform, run experiments, and make sure to always consult your users and customers um, and involve them in your research and testing. So why open source your docs? Well, a few reasons that worked for our product and teams, uh, but also work for others in the industry. Even if you don't open source in the beginning, uh, starting to care and maintain for your documentation is really important for your teams and the future of your team members, customers, and products. So things like accountability, transparency, customer value and engagement, increased adoption, consistency, and efficiency are all great reasons why you should open source your docs. And also, because docs are everyone's business. Thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed the talk today. Um, if you have any questions 
or about product documentation or anything else I cover today, feel free to leave a comment on my Codeland post on Code Newbie Community. You can follow me on Code Newbie, Twitter, or Polywork at Alexandra MMR. And I look forward to hearing from you. Hope you have a great time at Codeland. Thank you.